In this video, I'm going to be using TDI to wrap a REST service around an LDAP directory. Now, this assembly line is available for download. There should be a link uh, in the description of the video itself, as well as on the tdi-users.org site. Now, this approach can be used to service enable any type of system or data store. And the payload that you return can be in some XML format, like OSLC, it could be Atom RSS, it could be JSON or CSV or whatever you want. It's just up to you to format that payload that's going back to the client. So to see how this thing works, let's just start it. And once my server connector is listening to port 8080, let's open a browser and make a request. And let's look at the data itself. So here's the information I'm getting back. I can also add query string parameters. And that'll be applied as a search filter to my assembly line when it's querying this information from the directory. So let's look how this is done. I'll create a new assembly line, which we'll call REST2. Then all of these assembly lines, which are listening for incoming clients over HTTP, need an HTTP server connector. I'll set up my input map to return all the attributes I get from the client request, and my output map to map back to the client any data that I have in my assembly line, in the work entry. Now the connector itself will only take those attributes that are prefixed with HTTP dot because those will be the header properties going back. And then in the connection tab, I decide which port this is going to listen to. So we'll choose 81 this time. Now I can test this very quickly by adding a dump entry. When we run it now, and the connector is started and it's listening, if we change our request to 81, our assembly line will be getting information back. So I've gotten two requests. I've gotten the second request is for fab icon. I can see that when I look at the HTTP base. The first request is the one for the collection people. And it also contains, okay, let me go back up here again. It also contains my query string. That's parsed out as an attribute, HTTP.QS. and the name of that argument or that parameter. So far, so good. So I'm gonna add the branch, which is going to limit or, or to ignore everything that's not a request to the collection people. And we'll call that if this is a people request. Then for the conditions of this branch, if we take a look and we grab the HTTP base and make sure that that starts with forward slash people. And we don't have to make a case sensitive. Then I'll drag my dump work entry on top of my branch or of my loop. I'm sorry, of my branch. So that way it will only dump out information if this is a valid request. If we try this again, I'm a big fan of making small changes and then testing again. Now we're only getting one message dumped, and it's the message for people with the query string. Now, in the case that this is a valid request, 
I want to get out that query string. I want to apply that as a, as a uh, parameter or a filter to my connector. But I'm going to go ahead and add my connector, my LDAP connector. And I'm going to put that in a loop. Because it'll be returning multiple, based on the search filter, multiple entries. And we'll call this one for, uh, for each person found in LDAP. Then we'll choose the connector that we want, and I'll use the standard LDAP connector. Now in the connection parameters, we'll have this go to uh, Buffalo, to the public directory at the University of Buffalo in New York. I'll be going in anonymously here. And let me just search for which of these search bases are available for me. And I'll use the first one. Now I can go to my input map and test my, my parameters that I'm actually be returning data. This seems to work just fine. And I'll map in all the attributes that I get back. Now, the connector loop allows me to set connector parameters programmatically using a mapping paradigm. So here I can find the LDAP search filter that I want to affect, map that in. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to first, I'm going to get back the uh, query string by requesting that from work, work.getString http. Dot qs.name. Now, typically in TDI, we can just use simple dot notation to return attributes. But since this attribute also has dots in the name, I have to use a different approach. I also only want the string value, or the value of this attribute returned as a string. I don't want the attribute itself, which contains more information than just the value that it carries. And then I can say if QS equals null if there was no return, if this is uh, if there was no query string, then we'll return CN equals star. So we'll return everybody. Else, return this query string parameter. Now I'm going to drag this one on top of my for loop, or my connector loop. And now it will be displaying to the log those people that it finds. So again, let's just test this. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, I can't just return the filter because the filter is just the value. I'm missing, I need to return this. as cn equals plus the query string, which means I could actually simplify this and say so if the query string is null, I set it to star, and then I construct my search filter. So one more test. And I'm going to have to stop my previous run. Otherwise, I can't start another assembly line, which will be listening to the same port. Now, it's not returning anything yet, but it is printing out those people that it's finding. So if we can find the CN attribute, we can see these people start with a Z. All right, so far, so good. The next step here is that before the loop, before the loop actually starts, I need to prepare my return payload. I'm going to be creating a hierarchical entry in TDI and then appending data to it as I read this information from the LDAP. So I'll add a component. It will be an empty script. We'll call this init. 
and this needs to be before the loop itself. So in this loop, I'm going to maintain a count. I'll just make set a count equal to zero, and then I want an XML entry or a return entry equals system new entry. And then I'm going to build a results or an attribute to my entry called results where I'm going to append all the people. I also know that from experience, since I'm going in anonymously to this LDAP uh, server, I could get an administrative or a size limit error, and that will stop my assembly line. So I'm going to go to the hooks, and in the default on error, I'm going to add a little bit of code, because as long as this is enabled, the assembly line won't stop. It will execute whatever logic I have here and continue. So I'm going to log a message. And then I'll print out the error message. Error is another entry object that TDI provides in the case of an error, and it contains a number of attributes like the connector name, the operation that was being done, uh, and in this case I'm using the message itself. We do want to exit the loop though. I don't have an exit loop, but I have an exit branch. And here I say I'm exiting the loop. Now, inside the loop, I want to create uh, each person's subnode. So I'm going to start by making a person attribute. And then I'm going to append to that person. I want the nodes in my XML to be called person. And I want them to have an attribute, which is the name. And I do that by prepending the name of the attribute with an at symbol or uh, an ampersand. And this will be work.cm. And then we'll have person.title. Person.type will be work. Affiliation code. And person. I'm not sure what we'll call this. Department equals. And then I need to append this to my return entry person or results. And I also want to increment my count. All right. I don't want this dump entry happening all the time, so I'll just disable that. Now, after the loop completes, I'll want to pass that back to my HTTP server connector. It needs to be one of these HTTP attributes. I'm going to put it in the body so it goes back then to my browser, to my client. And I'll use an attribute map to set return body. This will be HTTP.body. And here I'm going to set that to the return, return entry to XML. And I'm also going to add another uh, another script here, which I'll just call display results. And we'll just print out task log message found
just to print out the result. Now let's see if my scripting holds water here. It's not quite working like I wanted to because I'm getting these strange quotes here. Let me just make sure that I'm returning or I'm setting the name using the person's name. It looks like I've returned an attribute because I get quote, the name of the attribute, and this is all being encoded for XML, and then colon, and then the value. And that's the way an attribute in TDI turns itself to a string. Well, I don't want that. I just want that value. So let's go back to TDI stop our assembly line and when we add that person I won't just say work.cn here I could say work.getStringCN or I could use the attributes get value get value allows us to step through the multiple values that an attribute may hold if we call this method with no argument then it means return the first value and return it as a string so it would be just as doing a uh, Work.getString CN works the same way. We just save that with Control S. We'll run again and then reissue the same query. And now my node attribute looks a lot better. So now I have my running assembly line. If we go for a search that's too broad, we should see the message being displayed. We still get data back, but we see the message that we had a size limit exceeded. And that concludes this demo.